Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another CW webinar. I'm Vashku, and me and my team are here to bring you the main highlights of the 2020 update of the Ground Granulated Blast Furnace Slag Market Forecast Report. For today's presentation, I would like to introduce myself, Vasco Teixeira, a business analyst at CW Group based in Lisbon, Portugal, and my colleague Prashant Singh, director at CW Group based in Mumbai, India. On today's agenda, uh, we would like, uh, we would start uh, with an introduction of our company, what is that we do, what uh, we have to offer and share the main highlights of the new uh, ground granulated blast furnace slag market forecast report. So uh, about CW Group. Uh, CW Group is present across three distinct verticals, which are advisory, research, and media. Under advisory, CW works with major global consultancies and leading institutions, including the World Bank, and funds on projects. We provide consulting and uh, advisory expertise on a diverse product portfolio. And for example, a recent sample of CW advisory projects include a detailed study for World Bank on a circular economy for the MENA and West Africa regions. We, are, we have also helped the IFC to evaluate a potential investment for a West African cement manufacturer. And another example includes a complete business process analysis for an online art gallery website. Now, under the research umbrella, CW focuses on global cement demand, as well as detailed industry and country reports. Uh, we provide historical as well as forecasts for markets in a variety of products, including one of our main products, the TPR, which stands for Trade Prices Report, and the VFR, which stands for Volume Forecast Report. We also provide commodity price assessment for cement clinker, as well as pet coke and coal. Now, at last, under the media umbrella, uh, you can have access to our vast database. You can subscribe to newsletters for topics of interest, including cement, uh, building materials, paper and pulp, pet coke, bulk and uh, coal. And we also have industry specific meetings, which we have started to hold in person. And for example, as of the, uh, the 8th and the 9th of December of last year, we held in Mexico the Alternative uh, Fuels and Raw Materials Americas 2021, most knownly known as AFAR. So now moving on to the report itself and what it includes. Um, uh, I would like to dive here into the, to this presentation. And uh, so you have an idea of uh, what's included in this report. Um, it includes an understanding of uh, different types of slag. For this report, we have decided to have a deeper look at EF slag, given the fact that there has been a shift uh, trend from BOF to EAF in the past couple of years. Um, the report is also focused on the ground granulated blast furnace slag market, both at a global level and a regional level. And at last, we cover the, the, the main global uh, producers. So here, moving on to uh, the global economy uh, outlook. Um, the global economy in 2022 enters in a weaker position than previously expected. Um, as the new Omicron variant spreads and uh, countries have reimposed mobility restrictions and added to this, rising um, energy prices and supply disruptions have resulted in higher and more broad-based inflation than anticipated. Notably in the United States, many emerging markets and developing economies. Furthermore, the ongoing financial troubles impacting China's real estate sector and slower than expected recovery of private consumption have also had uh, a follow-on effect on the, on the economy. 
according to IMF's January update, global growth is expected to moderate from 5.9% uh, in 2021 to 4.4% uh, in 2022, reflecting forecast markdowns in the two largest economies. Um, the emergence of uh, new COVID variants could prolong the pandemic and induce uh, renewed economic disruptions. And moreover, supply chain disruptions, energy price vol volatility, and located wage pressure mean uncertainty around inflation and policy paths. Uh, other global risks may materialize as geopolitical geopol tensions remain high in the Western uh, Europe uh, between Russia and Ukraine, in Asia in the, in the Taiwan uh, Straits, and in the Middle East um, due to the ongoing conflict in uh, the Yemen. Furthermore, the ongoing climate, uh, climate emergency means a higher probability of occurrence of major natural disasters, which could also have a major impact uh, in the, the global economic uh, outlook. Uh, on the other hand, the World Bank forecasts a slightly lower growth of 4.1% uh, in 2022 as pent-up demand dissipates and as fiscal and monetary support is unwound uh, globally. Um, while JP Morgan forecasts uh, global growth to reach 4.2% in 2022, as pandemic-induced uncertainty eases and uh, private sector fundamentals sustain above uh, potential growth. Moreover, JP Morgan considers that households and corporates have built, ex up, uh, built up excess savings and credit conditions are easing. And at the same time, there is considerable, considerable pent up demand in global services and inventories. Now, moving on to the global uh, crude production. Uh, in 2022, the global crude production uh, is expected to have uh, an increase of 0.4% year-on-year, being impacted by the lower output from China, which uh, was affected by mandatory steel output cuts that aim at reducing the sector's carbon uh, emissions. China's uh, property development is also expected to remain on a downward trend with limited growth in the construction sector, to be seen in this year after the sector received large uh, stimulus over the period uh, between 2016 and 2020, resulting in overall decreased uh, crude steel production. On the other hand, uh, Asia, ex-China and Europe are forecasted to balance the Chinese crude uh, production, um, driving the global crude production uh, to an estimated 1.87 uh, uh, billion tons in 2027. Uh, now I'm going to pass this presentation to my colleague Prashant, who will take you through the highlights of our report. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, and uh, thank you, Vasco. Uh, my name is Prashant, and we I will be taking you through the major uh, points of uh, that we have covered in this report. Um, so, uh, we are when we look at the overall scenario today, what we see is that there are multiple sources of slag, and we have always focused uh, this report on GGBFS because it is uh, from our perspective, because of our relationship to the cement and broader broader uh, uh, building materials industry, GGBFS is an important component of cementitious products. It can help alleviate this carbon emissions uh, uh, that uh, the industry is now tasked with and focused on reducing. Um, however, at the same time, we are also seeing that uh, there are many countries, especially China now, that are making a significant uh, move to consider moving away from uh, BOF due to the fact that it is highly inefficient uh, in terms of energy uh, and it causes a lot more emissions. And so now there is uh, a sustained uh, expectation that you will see um, 
older BOFs in China being closed down and being replaced by much more energy efficient EAS, uh, consequently, of course, resulting in a reduction of uh, production of uh, slag that can be used to produce CGBFS. Uh, whereas uh, slowly over a course of time, you will see more opportunities and avenues of other steel slags, EAF slags. Um, so when we look at uh, this slide here, we have given you a sort of an overall uh, uh, preview of sort of the different types of chemical uh, makeup that you see. Uh, of course, within countries and across regions, this varies significantly due to the various factors of the quality of the, the raw materials, the, the chemical composition of the raw materials. But on average, these are assumed to be sort of the uh, in global uh, uh, examples of what is uh, supposed to be a blast furnace slag and a EAF slag. And of course, uh, these are very, very different. Uh, for example, in some of the major countries, including China versus India versus what you see in uh, Japan. All three in Asia, all three major producers, but their chemical compositions and sort of the price that they command for because of that is extremely different. Um, next slide, please. So um, what, what you're seeing is that we there are no real BO, uh, BF capacities that have been announced. And what we're doing, uh, what we've understood is that uh, there are significantly more EAF capacities that are coming up uh, with limited number of other BOFs. Uh, BO EAFs are being preferred across other countries uh, where they do not have access to these raw materials, primarily because uh, they require steel scrap. And as many more countries are adopting policies focused on recycling, uh, there are more opportunities to uh, have steel scrap in these countries uh, be revitalized and reused. Um, and, and therefore, uh, EAFs are being preferred uh, also because they're not only energy efficient, but you can have smaller mill sizes uh, and therefore uh, be more cost effective in terms of the capex required to set up. Um, China is, of course, slowly migrating now from BOF to the energy friendly EAFs. And uh, it's already because uh, China has so much. Uh, uh, excess actually of steel scrap uh, because of this continuously building uh, their construction projects. Uh, so they, they want to take an advantage of some of the steel scrap that they were actually exporting, but now want to use it within their own country and therefore also simultaneously reduce carbon emissions and, and uh, sort of uh, focus on a more circular economy outlook. Um, with that, we, we expect the demand for uh, ground, uh, ground uh, blast furnace slag uh, to see a slight decline over the forecast period. Not much slight, because this is the initial stage of the movement out from BOF to EF. I think the, what we understand and what we have spoken to industry experts is that there will be a much more profound shift uh, you know, uh, around the 2030 mark where we see a significant uh, a movement from China towards the EAF. Um, next slide, please. So when we look at uh, uh, global pig iron production, um, we, we see that it's unfortunately, it was, you know, um, China is always the major point of discussion in this uh, industry, as in many others, of course, uh, due to its overwhelming nature and weight uh, in, in this um, realm. Uh, in Asia, pig iron production is likely to be dominated by India um, at around 84 million tons, and we expect it to be growing at around a CGR of around 3 to 5 percent somewhere. Uh, Japan is estimated at more than around 60 plus million tons. However, we expect it to slightly decline at around 
uh, 2 percent over the forecast period, uh, while South Korea, which is pegged around 51 to 55 million tons, somewhere around there, is expected to grow at a CAGR of around 2 percent. Uh, one of the bright spots in the region has been the explosive growth that we've witnessed out of Vietnam. And uh, it has actually gone from having virtually no capacity to almost 16 million tons in the span of five years. And uh, if you, uh, and based on sort of the, their economic plans, uh, they have a very focused uh, effort to develop this into almost twice this size over the next five to seven years. Uh, whereas uh, in Europe, uh, in gray, in uh, Europe as in general, but especially in Turkey, we're seeing that Turkey is helping drive uh, the pig iron production and therefore also the GBFS production in Europe. Um, Europe, uh, Western Europe, uh, is actually now expected to sort of revert uh, back to its pre pandemic levels of consumption slowly over the forecast period. Uh, but the actual growth in that region will be driven primarily by Turkey. So um, next slide, please. So well, when we are looking at um, uh, the GGBFS consumption, um, there was a slight decline uh, sort of last year, uh, predominantly because uh, steel sort of uh, construction was impacted uh, uh, for significant periods of time across major economies. Uh, but we expect, and the World Steel Association also sort of in, in line with uh, their overall outlook expects sort of growth to be around 2 to 3% uh, in 2022. Um, China, of course, accounts for almost 60% of global consumption. And it is expected to witness a slight decline this year, uh, given that the real estate troubles that have plagued the sector since uh, almost the second half of last year um, show very little signs of actually going away or the core problems actually being addressed. Additionally, uh, the Winter Olympics are sort of going on, uh, are scheduled to start in China. And that has also ensured that to provide sort of the ideal climactic conditions uh, during the Olympics, money heavy industries have sort of been forced to reduce or sort of stop production to ensure that the air remains sort of clean. Overall, uh, we expect uh, global production to sort of recover. Uh, major economies, including uh, sort of India, this year are expected to grow with demand expected to uh, uh, exceed pre-pandemic levels. Um, Asia X China in general is expected to see an increase uh, in terms of GGBFS over 12% last year, while Europe is expected to see an increase around 14% in terms of consumption. Uh, but, but again, uh, putting into perspective the low base, uh, this will still not sort of exceed pre-pandemic levels. Uh, in North America, we expect consumption levels to be around eight to nine million tons, um, with a definite forecast that North America for the foreseeable future will see most of its incre incremental demand being catered uh, by imports, uh, because there, um, there are sort of very limited plans of increasing domestic capacity due to sort of high cost of environmental and regulatory concerns. And the fact that there is sort of abundant uh, material uh, that they can import at a much more cost-effective price. Um, next slide, please. So uh, as we were discussing before, we had decided to sort of look at this new chapter and focus a little bit more attention on EAF because we, this is what we believe that will become an important player uh, in sort of flag uh, going forward. One of the biggest hurdles for EAS flags to be used within the construction industry is the very fact that it is very chemically, uh, the chemical composition varies significantly. There have been many attempts to sort of standardize 
uh, so that it can use, be used in sort of uh, different applications uh, across the building industry, but not in cement. So it can be used for the, sort of asphalting and landscaping and all sort of these other ancillary um, uh, functions and applications, but not in the core application of sort of replacing um, uh, GGBFS or actually competing with GGBFS to replace clink Portland Clinker, uh, which is a, a major producer of emissions. That being said, uh, newer applications will have to be found uh, as uh, the as the industry and as global production slowly shifts towards uh, the energy efficient uh, EAS method. And uh, this is a long term trend that we expect, especially uh, given the fact that Asia X China is expected to account for the largest share of EAF production. Uh, representing almost 40% uh, of global production, and Europe uh, is around 20. Um, within Europe, of course, uh, Turkey is the largest steel stack producer and is forecast to be the main driver of this uh, new production going forward. Uh, next slide, please. So when we look at uh, in terms of consumption, China is, of course, the largest consumer and will remain so uh, in 2020, not only in 2027, but likely, uh, you know, for the next coming decade, because the, 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 the difference between that and China and anybody else is not a magnitude of a few tons, it's a few hundred million tons. So there's actually going to be no competition for that for a significant value of time. But in terms of market size, we estimate that China has an excess of around 61% of uh, the global market size. And but by 2027, we expect uh, it to have a little bit less, a little bit more than 50%. Um, after China, Asia, China, and Europe are the second and third largest regions with a market site close to about a billion dollars uh, in tw by 2027. Um, now, given the disparity in volumes between Asia, China, and Europe, uh, the reason, the simple reason between the market size uh, being sort of sort of equivalent is the higher value of slag prices in Europe vis-a-vis -vis the slag prices that are prevailing in Asia. Uh, the region, uh, so um, Asia X China, however, is the region that is expected to be the major regional driver for this product over the forecast period, uh, with a significant contribution coming from, of course, uh, Japan and India. But we also expect over the longer term to see Vietnam um, be a major player in this sector going forward. Uh, in Europe, we expect, uh, Europe is expected to. Uh, account for roughly between 90 to 10 percent of global uh, consumption by 2027. Uh, and as stated before, we expect that developed economies such as uh, Germany, uh, France, the UK, Spain, and Italy to sort of revert to their pre pandemic levels. Uh, but the actual growth will be driven by Turkey. Now, uh, understandably, Turkey is uh, right now currently in a um, tough economic scenario. Um, but uh, the, the prospects, overall prospects over the next succeeding years uh, seem to sort of uh, reinforce our belief that they will be able to overcome this growth. So um, the last slide, please. So uh, basically summing up, uh, the, the economic growth is uh, expected to be impacted by sort of the uh, new variants of uh, COVID-19, which are sort of enforcing uh, governments to impose lockdown. China, of course, has a zero tolerance policy, which makes uh, even one single case, uh, makes the government close down entire cities, impacting growth. Uh, other countries are now moving towards a more lenient model, but it will still have an impact on sort of the consumption and real estate sector growth. Uh, Almost all markets are expected to see a 
uh, increase in global crude production over the forecast period, uh, with possibly a slight decline from China. Uh, but uh, given the fact that China produces a close to a billion tons of steel, uh, that really doesn't uh, you know, uh, mean much, especially for China. Um, we expect on an average of global growth to be flat, in terms of flat production to be around 2%, but it will only be a, uh, a minor decline, uh, uh, overall minor decline for GGBFS. Uh, whereas steel uh, EAF, we're going to see an increase over the uh, forecast period. Uh, Europe is expected to, of course, uh, continue to be equivalent or maybe perhaps even exceed Asia X China's market size over the forecast period for the reasons explained, given the huge price difference between the two markets. And um, overall, the prospects for the industry remain sort of. Uh, stable with a slight downward bias. So I would uh, now like to thank you all for your time and attention. And please uh, feel free to connect with us should you have any questions. And um, we look forward to seeing you uh, at our next webinar.